Uh, welcome to Fall River Conservation uh, Commission meeting uh, held at uh, public hearing on Monday, December 6, 2021, 530 in the first floor hearing room, one government center, Fall River, Mass. Uh, to consider the following petitions. Um, start with roll call. This will start at your end. Here. Ms. Boyle here. John Grant here. Louis Ferrer. Here. Jim Fizzik here. James Lawrence All members are present. We also have with us tonight uh, Nina Pavel from uh, Planning uh, Department, Caitlin Young, Planning and Conservation uh, um, Agent, and uh, Pamela Martin from Fred TV. Um, first on the agenda is old business. Uh, we'll open the hearing to uh, uh, notice of intent is SE-24-782 owner applicant is MassDOT-Highway Division, project location 79 and Duval Street. Follow a beta group on behalf of MassDOT Highway Division. MassDOT is proposing to reconstruct Route 79 and Duval Street to improve roadway conditions, improve circulation and public access to the waterfront, improve stormwater management, improve pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure, and create new city-owned parcels for redevelopment. This was tabled from November 1st, 2021 meeting. Hello. Hello. Hi. Valerie Kildoff with uh, MassDOT Project Manager. And I'm Laura Kraus with Beta Group. I'm Liana Denunzio with MassDOT Environmental. Um, when you were last here, we uh, asked to have uh, CDM Smith uh, do an overlook for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because this is one of uh, the biggest projects we've overseen. So we wanted to just make sure we had everything covered and uh, uh, to a key to make sure when it's finished that, you know, it's everything's going to flow right, mm -hmm. since we're the first ones on the blueprint. <laughs> uh, you got our thing from CDM. We did. There wasn't much changes. Do you have anything to... I can answer that if you want me to. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we reviewed the comments. There were no major issues. A lot of them were some minor transcription issues, so things like that. Um, there won't be any major design changes associated with the uh, revisions. It's just some small revisions to the stormwater report, which we can get you, no problem. Does the board have any questions? <clears throat> no questions. Okay. Uh, does anyone in the public have any questions? <clears throat> Just um, Ken Fiola, Bristol County Economic Development Consultants. <clears throat> Just a comment I'd like to make. First, I'd like to thank the Conservation Commission for doing its due diligence with the review of the um, of the information provided to them by uh, both uh, Bader and, and Mastock. Uh, I'd just like to impress upon uh, the Conservation Commission is that there's a certain amount of urgency with this project um, where, as you know, MassDOT's trying to get this out uh, for bid during the spring with a con contract award sometime in August or September of 2022, which would allow for construction to begin in 2023. As most of you know, this is a project we've been working on for 20 years. It's finally coming to fruition. And now, you know, the devil's always in the details, but I know there's a lot of hard work being expended by both the city, you know, the city staff as well as the private consultants to adhere to this schedule. Um, I think at the end of the day, we're going to have a project that's going to be uh, the envy of the entire South Coast region in terms of its impact on the community. So again, you know, I'd just like to, once again, thank you for keeping lines of communication open and keeping this project on schedule and, you know, look forward to, uh, with you people working together, you know, continuously to, uh, to make this uh, happen in the pres prescribed time schedule. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Do you speak, Mr. Chair? Sure, so uh, after we received um, the peer review letter, I reviewed it with um, Kevin from CDM Smith, and uh, we discussed, you know, as you said, they are rather minor things that remain to be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, both Kevin and I, unfortunately, CDM Smith could not have a representative here tonight. Um, but um, we do both recommend that this uh, be approved with one of the conditions being that, you know, all remaining um, items on this be addressed with CDM Smith and, you know, you know, suddenly stuff to them, they look at it and then they can give us the go to proceed with construction when we get to that point. But um, at least uh, CDM Smith and I are both comfortable with issuing this with the condition that these be addressed, you know, after the hearing is closed and whatnot. So. Okay. Okay. So can I have a motion? Oh, 
Right. I simply have one request. If you have any more public meetings, would you be sure to send a copy to the Conservation Commission of any notices? Absolutely. I really regret having missed the one that was a month ago. And it was not, there was no story in the Herald News, by the way, that I could discern. And I went back two months. It's a, a public notice. That's not a story. And I do not read all, I do not read every public notices. I do read the obits, and I read a lot of stuff. But I don't do the crossword puzzles, and I don't read the old, and I don't read the public notices. And I'm not saying you were, you were negligent. I'm saying that, that communication nowadays, particularly in this COVID time, is really tough. If you don't believe me, try running a church. Any other questions? Could I have a motion to close the hearing? So moved. Second. Second. Vote. Aye. 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 <clears throat> so uh, we have the little conditions here. Uh, so um, first general condition is this document shall be included by reference in all contracts, plans, signification, dealings with the activity that is subject of this order and that are created or modified after the instant the date ordered along with statement of that this order shall subside any conflicting contractual arrangements with plans or specifications. Uh, the applicant shall provide a copy of the order to this person or persons supervising the activity that this is a subject of this order and will be responsible for ensuring that all persons performing that permit activities are fully aware of the terms and conditions of this order. This order authorizes any activity described on the approval plans and approved documentation referred to in this order, any other or additional activities in this area within the jurisdiction of the conservation will require separate reviews and approval of the conservation or its agent. Prior to construction, prior to any work commencing on the site, the applicant shall display the DEP file number for the order on the sign with minimum dimensions of two feet by two feet at locations clearly visible from the street. The sign shall remain in place and visible until Certified certificate of compliance is issued. The applicant shall provide proof of to the commission or its agent that the order of conditions has been recorded at the registry of deeds. All comments listed in CDM Smith Peer uh, review letter dated December 1st, 2021 shall be addressed by the applicant. Construction may begin only when confirmation has been given by CDM Smith that all remaining issues are been addressed. During construction, the applicant and any person involved in the activity that is subject to this order shall notify the commissioner or his agents immediately upon discovery of any matter related to this order that may affect any areas within the jurisdiction of commission. A copy of this conditions, construction plans, and copies of the documents and reports shall be on site upon commencement during any site work for contractors to view in the year two. Uh, Post-construction, upon completion of construction, Final soil stabilization, removal, erosion, sedimentation control. Applicant shall submit the following to the Conservation Commission to request a certificate of compliance. A, complete request for a com certificate of compliance was from WPA Form 8A, a letter from registered professional engineer certifying the compliance of the property with disorder condition detailing any deviations that exist and potential effect on the project. A statement that work is substantial compliance with no detailing of the deviation shall not be accepted. And as a built plan signed and stamped by registered professional engineer or land supervisor so in post construction conditions within all areas under the jurisdiction of Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Can I have a motion? Uh, make a motion to adopt the uh, special conditions. Second. 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 Uh, roll call vote. Aye. 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 Okay, vote passes. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, guys. And, you know, what, after you read through them, if anyone has any additional conditions or anything, no? yeah, feel, free. feel free to shout them out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, 
Next is a uh, notice of 10 SE-24-783, owner applicant of City of Fall River. Uh, project location is South of Maritime Street at Westport Town Line, followed by VHP on behalf of the City of Fall River. The City of Fall River is proposing the extension of the existing bike trail 500 feet to the Westport Town Line, located on an existing railroad bed and upgrades to a portion of the existing rail trail. This was tabled from November 1st, 2021. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Eric Olson with VHB, and this is Sean Jadis with VHB. And um, we're here to present the uh, Kikachin River Rail Trail. Can everyone see this okay? I know it's a little bit behind you. That's better than over there. Yeah, that's right. All right, great. All right, so the, um, as you know, the applicant is the city of Fall River. And as promised via my email, I, I think the, uh, the text gets screwed up when I compress the PDF of the four um, figures that, uh, that we delivered with the, um, with the application. So I've included all four here. Um, so this is the project location um, along the north shore of the uh, South Portupa Pond, just south of Route 6. Yep. And this is the, um, that's just, uh, that's the aerial map, a little bit more of a close-up. Okay. Thank you. That's my little back. Right. Okay, on, on the left we have the uh, FEMA map. You can see the, uh, the FEMA flood zone map here. And as you, you may have noticed from the application that there's no um, set elevation for this particular um, uh, flood, um, flood area. It's just um, a GPS map overlay, basically, straight from... Um, the uh, MassGIS website, and and this is the um, NHESP map where you can see that there's um, you know a couple areas up here, but nothing along the project area. So project overview: uh, the applicant again is the City of Fall River. Um, we're proposing to extend the existing Kikachin Rail Trail, which was installed about eight to ten years ago, um, 550 feet to the Westport line. Um, they didn't extend it. Um, for um, for various reasons back when they installed um, the original um, the original trail so this is simply to extend the rail trail 550 feet um, along you know what is now a um, previously disturbed railroad bed um, this includes 10 foot wide paved path and improvements to the slopes of the existing abandoned railroad bed and it's uh, formerly the Watupa branch of the Fall River Railroad the purpose is to provide bicycle and pedestrian accommodations and enable future connectivity to the uh, adjacent town of Westport. Um, it's located entirely within previously disturbed um, railroad, railroad bed e easement adjacent to South Watupa Pond, and it's been designed to avoid impacts to bank or land under uh, uh, land underwater um, within South Watupa Pond. And his, uh, I have a few slides of existing conditions just to give you a good idea. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is, um, this is just to the east of, of the existing trail, and this is what it looks like here. You can see it in two different, uh, two different conditions. This is what it looks like grown in in the summer, and this is what it looks like in the wintertime. As you can see, there's a lot of um, you know, vegetation. There's a bunch of invasives, as we talked about last month, in there. Um, you know, right along the uh, the bed itself, and there's um, a fair amount of trees along the uh, you know along the bank as well. And as you can see on the right hand side, the bank pretty much consists of previously disturbed um, you know stones, uh, large stones. There's even like a grinding mill um, stone right there on, on the right hand photo. So I'm sure many of you have been down here before, so you know what it looks like. Oh. And on the right, um, we'll be discussing it at uh, one point a swale um, along um, along the north side of the project, and that's um, a picture of the you know, non-vegetated portion of the swale, like right up on the Westport line, right there. And um, so this is the this is the plan set. It's a little bit hard to see the well. Let me jump right to the impacts. And then I, I'll bring up the plan set again with a little bit of color coding with the impacts. So again, there's no impacts to, um, uh, to um, bank or land on the water. There will be um, temporary and permanent impacts to bordering land subject to flooding. And uh, there are, will be impacts within the 25 foot no disturb zone. 
Um, Yep, so no outstanding resource, resource waters, no priority habitat, no rare species or estimated habitat of rare wildlife. And again, this is, um, this is the plant set. There's two sheets. I'm, I'm sure you've looked them over um, in person with the hard copy too, but you can see in yellow um, the 25 foot no disturb zone. And then the 100 year flood, flood zone pretty much incorporates um, everywhere that we're going to be working. And it's the second page, it's the West Port line there on the right-hand side. And so uh, I wanted to, dis to discuss the area of impact. So I put these photos in here just to show you how it's going to work, where, you know, what we have planned is, as you can see here, see the, the wetland flags, or the, the bank flags right there in pink. And when you look at these photos, they kind of show the bank, you know, the existing bank with the rocks and stones and, and, and of various sorts down below. And then you can see right here, like the, the delineation of where the actual railroad bed is. Right here is a really good example where when we go to do the work, we won't be touching this. We won't be touching the trees. We won't be touching any of the bank rocks. We'll be sticking to the previously disturbed area of the, of the actual railroad bed right out here. So we put, we'll be putting our erosion controls right down there and keeping all the work um, within the actual railroad bed itself. So the order of work activities will be to install erosion and sedimentation controls, um, install orange construction fencing around the work area uh, for safety. There will be some tree cutting. Um, I'll go back a little bit just so you can see. Uh, tree cutting would be, most of the tree cutting would be, like on the left hand, the South Tupa Pond is on the right. And there's, there's a, like a, what used to be an, an, um, an active swale, but it's all vegetated with trees at this point. Like so, this this swale like right here runs straight up along the side of it, and this is what it looks like further up towards the existing trail. So, as part of the project, we would have some tree cutting within that swale, but along along the bank, all those trees along the bank um, will stay. Even even the ones that are um, upslope of the bank line. We, we don't propose any tree cutting um, on that side. Um, there will just be some brush clearing and maybe some tree trimming. If there's any um, branches coming over the work area, you might just have to do some side trimming. <coughs> okay, let's get back to that. So, um, like I said, vegetation removal and grubbing within the work area. Um, <coughs> removing existing railroad tracks and ties. Grading within the footprint of the uh, planned paved portion of the rail trail, which would be 10 feet wide, um, and then installing the asphalt rail trail, remove any temporary materials needed uh, for site access, and then restore the disturbed portions of the site, installing loam and seed as needed, and once stabilized, removing um, you know, all, uh, all, all BMPs. Um, erosion and sediment control, um, we will have a a program for the project, uh, the non-structural practices would include temporary stabilization, temporary seeding, permanent seeding, pavement sweeping, and as we discussed last month, um, I added into the NOI um, a couple of paragraphs on um, how to uh, stock, uh, protect the stockpiles that contain invasive species um, so you know, we won't be spreading those around. Um, structural practices will include, uh, include erosion control barriers, catch space and inlet protection as needed, and um, a stone construction entrance. And uh, we will also be phasing the BMPs um, along the bank. I'm going to back up to the photos again. The BMP? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. The, so we'll be putting most likely compost filter socks, um, probably 20, 24 inches, or, or sill fence and hay bales, depending, most likely, um, most likely um, you know, mulch, mulch waddles along this area here. But what we have to do is we have to go in and dig out those railroad ties and, and, the, and, and the, um, the railroad tracks themselves. So it's going to kind of be hard to do both at the same time. So what our plan was, was to, for the excavation, install um, the erosion controls, do the excavation, and then, um, and then in certain areas while we're working, temporarily remove the erosion controls while we're uh, doing the grading, and then putting them back um, at the end of the day um, when we're done. That way we can um, you know, get the work done but still have erosion controls in. And um, I didn't put it in the NOI, but it's probably, you can put that as a condition that you know, no work 
uh, you know, we, we wouldn't be doing that type of grading work while it's raining out or any significant rain. That way we keep any sediment uh, from going down into the pond. All right, so. All right, so as far as regulatory compliance, um, we talked about this a little bit last month. Uh, the project complies with the uh, Wetland Protection Act regulations relating to bordering land subject to flooding to the greatest extent practicable. Um, mostly for the first one, there will be, um, as designed currently, a small loss of com compensatory flood storage volume um, over, over multiple elevations from 133 feet to 140 feet. And we're requesting the commission's approval um, for a loss of approximately 217 cubic feet of flood storage volume if it's determined that the, that the loss of 217 cubic feet will not cause an increase or will not contribute incrementally to an increase in the horizontal extent and level of flood waters during peak flows. Um, so as far as uh, the condition number two, proposed conditions will not restrict flood flows. Um, the, um, in essence, we're, we're really putting the elevation for the most part back to um, where it is right now, which is simply removing the railroad track, putting some pavement in, so we're really not changing the contours um, that much. Um, and the project will not impair the capacity of BLS to provide important wildlife, wildlife habitat functions. We did talk about this a little bit last month as well. I conducted a detailed wildlife habitat evaluation, and there's minimal important wildlife habitat characteristics present within the impacted area, and the impact area is, is previously disturbed. And uh, the existing habitat degradation from human disturbance and the significant presence of invasive species, you know, um, already you know degrades the area quite a bit. Um, as far as the 25-foot no disturb zone, we're requesting a waiver from the City of Fall River um, from that wet wetland buffer policy, given that the entire project is located within previously disturbed area, and the project is in compliance with the Mass Stormwater Standards to the extent practicable, as outlined in the Stormwater Memo, which was included in the filing. And this is just a few pictures of um, what it will look like, um, Representative. Um, this, this is the existing trail right now. Um, these pictures all come from j um, just, like this is, this is the actual turnaround, and then the, and our project is, is the 550 feet going you know, from, from this little cul-de-sac right here. I don't know how many of you have been to the been to the trail, been to this end of it, but and this is um, on one side of our work area. What it looks like this would be, you know, an area where where we use for staging. Um, but th this is how we'll be putting it back, back together. You'll have a ten feet wide um, path. You'll have uh, your grass in certain areas, and you can see here, like you know, what the bank would probably look like after we do some trimming and brush clearing, and then we, you know, restore it, and we'll have grass right on the side. The bank will look. Exactly like it does now, minus you know a little bit of grass up there, and the new paved area. So now I know we we did talk about. Um, well, I, first off, do you have any questions? I have one question: the uh, stone construction, stone driveway. Yeah. How much do you know where about that? That's okay. Yeah, that'll be over near the pages, right? Yeah, so there's currently two city accesses um, that break up the pages property. Could, so, could you speak a little on the mic? Sure. Uh, there's currently two, those two um, bump outs at the top are city owned property. So, we were thinking the one on the, on the left side, um, we can sort of make a ramp down to the to where it widens out um, to use for construction staging, but that that's where we were picturing the. Um, the stone ramp. Where's the, the restaurant from there? On the left. On the left, yeah. I believe it's, uh, it's right here. It's either that building or just a little bit further on. Yeah, it's that one. Yeah. Is there going to be a cul de sac at the end of this one also? I don't I think know. so, no. Just because no. it will connect with Westport. The hope is, I think, that Westport will yeah. uh, one but day I mean, build their yeah. own and it'll just be a straight shot. Just in the meantime, I know. People in the biking community are wondering, is it going to be like it is now? You get to the end, that's it. Or is it going to be any way of getting out to Route 6? Not as currently designed, no. no. I think that would, that would require so like going through a swale and then out to the sidewalk, which I'm, yeah, yeah. just not part of the plan. Yeah. There is a paper street in there. We talked about this last time, and you said it wasn't possible because, among other things, the 
Eric didn't like it. But um, any change in that? That was, um, remember we had uh, drawn up the ramp up to the parking lot and the LePage's was like heavily against it. Right. Like, yeah, right. what had happened was uh, LePage's restaurant, um, they were not, they, they were not keen on that idea and they showed some opposition to using the old paper street access right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even, even if we offered to repave their yeah, parking lot. Yeah, even if we lot, offered yeah. to repave <laughs> part of the parking lot and they, they just um, weren't about it. Right. Okay, I have one question. Sure. Okay. Uh, the asphalt didn't get on it when it was built, but what kind of asphalt are you going to use? Is it impervious, impervious? It'll be impervious. Well, and I think, um, I'm not sure of the exact makeup, but there, I think there's an inch of um, smaller grade and then three inches of uh, like intermediate course, and then the gravel sub base. And then, but you, the tire itself is, is is impervious. Yeah. Why not let the water go through? Um. I'm well, not sure. It's well, I mean, stone, I stone water wise, I think yeah. um, when when it comes to altering storm water flows, this area is just so small, um, and and the water would still end up in the same place, whether it's pervious or impervious. Because yes. um, right now it falls on the tracks, some of it will leach in, some of it will go off to either side. Um, and, and, and essentially all that water would eventually make it to South Buckingham <laughs> Pond, whether it be right. going down the bank or going into the, seeping into the ground in the current swale and then through the ground. And so the, just the a 10 foot wide, 550 foot long um, strip of asphalt just doesn't significantly change the storm water flow and, and it all ends up in the same place right in the, the adjacent swale. And I think the plan is to pitch it a little bit towards the swale so nothing's going down the bank so we don't cause an erosion or anything yeah. like that. And it all ends up in the same place. So I just think the, the need for, it's not like this is um, like a you know, huge development project where you're you know, taking- I know that. You no, know, like yeah. forest okay. and question, put in a big I'm parking lot. Actually in terms of writing on it. Okay. And the original request, which, which I made at the time of the that construction of the, the the one that's already there, was actually, um, and it was not widely supported, but I just simply wanted a bluestone uh, uh, because the, I'm concerned with it rippling. The current the current path is now rippling, um, and it's been. Years? When you say rippling, do you mean cracks or do you mean yeah. like so, so, I mean, you, ride, you walk on it, and if they really get bad, you trip, but right now you just mm. ride on it and it's bumpy. Right. Um, the the uh, East Bay, I mean, I've seen the East Bay big bike path clean, rippled, feet redone, rippled. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, you know, it doesn't, they don't, it doesn't last that long. And uh, I think the city of Fall River, unlike Rhode Island, I think the city of Fall River is responsible for the maintenance and upkeep. Well, I think, I mean, that's, I mean, I know, I think, because it'll be, it's essentially a city, it is a linear city park. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just wondering if there's anything you can do to make it uh, last longer, ripple, lipper less. Uh, you're the engineers, I'm not. Uh, no? You think you're giving us the longest, the best surface? Yeah, I mean, um, we chose the same type of uh, shared use path material that we typically use for mass dot type applications. Um, so I guess that's how we came up with the, the paved structure. But I don't know if that's something we could look into. It's going to be the same pavement as on the existing right. that's, that's, Yeah. yeah. 
That's what I'm Unless that was, yeah. maybe that was not um, inspected well during construction or, um, I know the, the lifespan should be at least like 20 years, but. Um. Okay, well, we'll see. I don't think the, the part that's in will last 20. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, you can, you can look at it. I mean, the, part, the picture you took was gorgeous. I wouldn't be surprised too if the rippling areas had um, either roots and or water flow over them. Um, ah, water flow over them, yeah. If, if there's anything, like I don't know the whole path, like I haven't been down the whole path, but if there's anything coming off site over the path that could, that could cause, you know, ripping yeah, no, over. I have not been over it in the rain. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I just wanted you to think about it and uh, All right. if you come up with anything to, to make it longer, remember our, our, and this is, our city is, will be responsible for it. And, if you said 20 years, it'll be responsible for it in 20 years. I won't need to worry about it, but we'll let some younger folks worry. Okay. That's Thank it you. for me. Thank you for doing this. Do you have any other questions? <clears throat> no questions. All right. Uh, okay. So can I go to you have a motion to close the public hearing? Uh, motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Seconded. Uh, vote. Aye. 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 We'll close the meeting. All right. Um, so our conditions, special conditions, generally, this document shall include all references and all contract plans, specifications dealing with activities that is subject to this order and created or modified after the interest date of this order, along with statements that this order shall superside any conflicting congressional contractor arrangements, plans, or specifications. The applicant shall provide a copy of this order to the person or any person supervising the activity that subject to this order and will be responsible for ensuring that all persons performing and permitted activities are fully aware of the terms and conditions of this order. This order authorizes only the activities described on the approval plans and the approved documents referred in this order or any other additional activities in this area within the jurisdiction of conservation it requires separate review and approval of the commission or its agent. Prior to construction, uh, prior to any work commencing on the site, the applicant shall arrange with the commission or its agent a pre-activity meeting between the applicant or the applicant's representative, the person or supervisor responsible for the work, and members of the conservation commission or its agent. The applicant shall display the DP file number for this order on a sign with minimum dimensions of two by two locations clearly visible from the street sign shall remain in place visible until a certificate of compliance is issued. The applicant shall provide a proof of commission or its agents that the order of conditions has been recorded with at the Registry of Deeds. Uh, the approved erosion control shall be installed or indicated on approved plans immediately after installation of erosion control. The Conservation Commission shall be contacted to conduct a follow-up inspection to ensure erosion controls have been properly installed prior to the start of work. During construction, the applicant and any person involved in this activity that is the subject of this order shall notify the commissioner's agent immediately upon discovery that any matter related to this order may affect any areas within the jurisdiction of conservation. A copy of this order or conditions, uh, construction plans and copies of documentation reports shall be on site upon commencement and during any work, site work for con contractors to view and adhere to. Uh, under no conditions shall the operation of equipment, storage, or material stockpiling of soil or other site disturbances take place <coughs> beyond the limit of work except where indicated within the plans. Erosion and sedimentation control devices shall be inspected after each storm event, repaired, or replaced as necessary. Erosion control devices shall remain in place and properly functioning until all exposed soils have been stabilized and final vegetation covered and a conservation commission or its agent uh, authorize the removal. Riprap material shall be clean and free of trash, tree stumps, roots, and other debris material. All vegetation removed prior to door and construction shall be properly disposed of off-site and shall be placed in a location or manner to avoid further spread of invasive plant species, either through uh, tarping, bagging, or other methods approved by commission or its agent. <coughs> Post-construction upon completion of construction, final soil stabilization and removal of erosion, sedimentation control, applicant shall submit the following to the Conservation Commission. 
to request a certificate of compliance. A complete request for a certificate of compliance from WPA Form 8A, a letter from a registered professional engineer certifying the compliance of the property within the order conditions, detailing any deviation that existed, potential effect on the project. A statement of that work, will substantial compliance with no detailing of the deviation shall be accepted. And as built, plan, signed, and stamped by a registered professional engineer or land supervisor showing post-construction conditions within all areas under the jurisdiction of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Action. Conditions of purity, uh, organic pesticides, herbicides, uh, fungicides, uh, slow release, fertilizers may be used subject to the review approval of conservation commission that shall this condition shall survive the expiration of the order and shall be included as a continuing condition on the certificate of compliance. There shall be no dumping of leaves, grass clippings, brush, or debris into the wetland resource areas. This condition shall supervise, survive the exp expiration of this order and shall include as a continuing condition as a, com a certificate of compliance. Uh, work in the bank. There's, uh, based off of what you had presented about removing, uh, temporarily removing uh, sedimentation control along the bank area mm -hmm. during fi finish grading, I, I propose an additional condition not listed on there that work along bank requiring temporary sedimentation control removal shall not occur during any precipitation event. Excellent. Which I think you had also we, yeah, yeah, exactly. We, I, yeah, that, we would have done that anyway. That's a best practice right. that we would yeah. do. Yeah. Okay. We'll have it yeah. in there too. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, can I have a motion? Make a motion to adopt the uh, conditions, special yeah. conditions. I have one more question. Uh, you mentioned that there wasn't much wildlife there. Uh, there was a lot of birding. A lot of birds. No, no, I'm not. Um, sorry, not. But there are. I no, no, I don't. I, I wasn't saying there isn't much wildlife. Um, Hold on. I did a um, habitat assessment, and, and specifically in the wording when you're doing a habitat assessment. Let me see, where can I find it? Um, well, this was recent. Yeah, it's it's when you're doing a habitat assessment, you're looking for specific things um, in in the area that are that are like uh, key. Uh, sorry, I'm not thinking of the words correctly, but key, you know. Ecological? Yeah. Ecological indicator species? Is that what you're looking for? No, no. Um, so, man, where yeah, is it? All right. There it is. Um, there it is. Important wildlife habitat characteristics. Mm -hmm. So as part of that, um, when you go and do that, the evaluation, this form lists off what the important wildlife habitat characteristics are. And, and what you do is you go out there and you look for them. And that's what I did. And so when it comes to important wildlife habitat characteristics, those things are, are mostly missing for the most part. It's in, and it's all in the NOI. What I did find out there, there were a few minor things. Um, one, one big one is tree, tree cavities of any size or dead trees. No, not many dead trees um, at all, if any, um, within the work area. But if you have a dead tree that's, you know, um, 12 inches around and it has um, holes in it. You're going to have owls living in there, squirrels, and, and whatnot. And that's the type of thing we're looking for. So I'm not saying there's not wildlife. I'm saying um, according to the uh, Mass Wildlife Habitat Evaluation Form, it's, it's well, lacking important wildlife habitat characteristics. Yeah, but, well, you know, I know some of that. Yep. yep. And when we've done, you know, I was, into, I was part of the group that evaluated that area. And we built first one. What I'm pointing out is just so simple. Mm -hmm. uh, when you do construction, uh, you're going to do it in the spring. In other words, the bird's nesting. Uh, I can tell you that we just went there and boy, the birding group found just lots of birds there within the last month. All right. Yeah. I believe it. Warblers and so forth. So that, and that we know that it's also true in the spring. So that uh, you need to somehow be careful of that. So I don't don't know what you can do except uh, try not to try not to dig the place up while the birds are nesting. Right. Uh, we had one just we had one example of that. The uh, water department did a lot of work while the uh, eagles were nesting. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they haven't been back since. Right. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> but I'm just saying that that's... Yeah, right, right. Okay, that, that, that will disturb them, so... There will be some disturbance, but we'll you know, try to minimize it as much as we can. And, and we designed it to minimize the actual tree cutting. Yeah, right. Thank okay. you. Thank you. We can vote now. <laughs> That's where we are. So we had a uh, second. motion made. Second. 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 Uh, roll call vote. Aye. 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 Uh, vote passes. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Certificate of Compliance SE-24-693 Owner Applicant is Bristol Pacific Inc. Project location is Highland Avenue. Assessors map is U-01-0017. Filed by SciTech C C Inc. On behalf of applicant requesting certificate of compliance, C C has determined that all work permitted has been uh, substantially completed in accordance with the order conditions. Good evening. For the record, my name is Dan Aguiar. I'm a senior project manager at SciTech CEC with addresses here in the city as well as Raynham, Massachusetts. As the chairman stated, this request before you is for the subdivision in its entirety of Highland Farms Phase 1. I think you all know it uh, fairly well. After a number of site visits dating back to April um, with the city planner, Paul Furlan from the Water Department, different um, municipal agencies, it has been determined that all the work has been completed in accordance with the order that was issued by this commission. Subdivision is really nice. They really did a great job. Uh, if you go out there, you see all of the individual lots with signage and things of that nature that we're going to deal with with some individual request tonight for some certificates of compliance but everything is grown in all the pavement is in they did fix a couple of little patched pavement areas over the last week or two that we wanted to get done before we did come to see you all the drainage is in it has functioned very well uh, through all these crazy rainstorms that we've had over the last year and a half so we're, we're happy with how everything worked out um, although probably a little bit of an over design but you can see when you do design something to that level that you can comfortably say that there are no issues out there with regards to the Wellness Protection Act, stormwater runoff, things of that nature. So we're, we're very proud of how the project came out. Again, we have a great client in Bristol Pacific that does a great job. They don't cut any corners. You ask them to do something and then, and then they do it, which is a good thing. So uh, we're here before the board tonight asking for a certificate of compliance for the subdivision work. Now that's the roadway, drainage ponds, outfalls, loaming seating, drainage structures, things of that nature. So this certificate uh, has nothing to do with individual lots. Every one of them will have their own individual filings uh, before you. Any questions? No questions. Um, Mr. Chair, um, I just uh, want to make a statement that I have been onto the site and have reviewed um, the as built and compared it to what's there and it and the um, previous order of conditions and it looks like everything was completed um, per the plans and the approval so I recommend the um, issuance of the certificate of compliance okay all right uh, so can I have a motion to order a certificate of compliance so moved second uh, roll vote aye 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 aye, aye. aye. vote passes aye. thank you Next on the agenda is an enforcement order at SE-24-622. Our applicant is Berkeley Street Limited LLC, El Bell Rock Road. Uh, assessor's map is W-19-002. Commission to review and ratify enforcement orders for violations, including unpermanent alteration of wetland resource areas associated with buffer area, uh, expired order of conditions. Um, so, regarding this enforcement order, um, last month I received um, an email indicating that there were potential violations at um, this property on Bell Rock Road. Um, a lot of you might uh, 
know it. It's kind of like, I guess it's sort of like a quarry that they're mm -hmm. using right now for stone. Um, mm -hmm. And I went out there and there were a lot of issues. There was a porta potty tipped over in a wetland. Um, there were um, old siltation fencing, I guess, from a, a um, previous order of conditions from like over 10 years ago that's expired. It's another violation. Um, throughout the area, there was a lot of sedimentation in the road into the wetland areas, um, including two catch basins that were so um, compacted with sediment that they no longer functioned at all. It actually, I believe, have caused alteration to the area, the extent of the wetland area. Um, I issued an enforcement order, you know, um, back last month. We have not received a response from the property owners at this point. So I, the, the enforcement order asked them to make some immediate improvements, including resetting siltation controls, proper street sweeping. But we, I had asked them to come in front of the commission to discuss the ongoing violations. We have not received a response or the uh, postal card indicating that the mail has been picked up. Um, so. Right, I, I recommend ratifying the, or reissuing the enforcement order with the amendment that um, uh, we ask that they attend the January meeting and that they have some sort of plan or uh, idea of what they're going to do going forward for the February 7th meeting. <clears throat> I agree. Uh, are there current operations taking place out there? When Yes. When we were out, Dennis Silva, the city inspector, and I went out and um, the, we, we actually pulled up and the first thing we were asked was, are you guys here for some stone? So it seems like the quarry business aspect is still going. But it, it did appear that in recent times there was a lot of soil movement pushing um, sediment into like an abutting wetland area over some pre-existing fence. It's just overall not particularly great out there, especially as when it received its uh, order of conditions years ago, it was not considered uh, estimated habitat for you know rare endangered wildlife, but now um, with the most recent uh, recategorization of all that and the remapping, it now is. So I've also um, you know let um, Natural Heritage and the DEP know about that as well. So. Do you know if they visited this site at all? No, they're actually waiting for me to hear back from the owners. Okay. Because so, um, they'd like to attend any site visits. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's always best to get permission. So, sure. yeah. All right. So, our next meeting in January is the 10th? It's the 10th or the 3rd? 3rd. 3rd? Yeah. I didn't know if we moved it because of the holiday. Okay. Going to have a motion to reissue the orders and ask the uh, the owners to attend our next meeting held on January third, two thousand twenty-two. So, so moved. Second. Second. All right. Vote passes. Next, there's a notice of intent, SE-24-784, owner applicant is Department of Conservation and Recreation. Project location is Edmund House Trail, followed by the Department of Conservation and Recreation. DCR is proposing to use prescribed fire to restore the, manage a pitch pine oak and forest woodland for long-term management. Just before we get into it, um, do you have proof of ad in the paper? Yes. Awesome. Just got to make sure we got it. <laughs> I also have a support letter from Mass Wildlife. All right.
Things can always can be a little tricky. There we go. <laughs> I've, had a, I've had my fights with them before. Okay. Set. I'm Paul Gregory, the management forester for the Southeast District for the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation, otherwise known as DCR. I'm here to discuss the notice of intent to allow prescribed burning within a wetland and, so, and its associated buffer in portions of the Freetown Fall River State Forest and the Southeast Mass Bioreserve. The Freetown Fall River State Forest is owned by DCR and the Southeast Mass Bioreserve is jointly owned by DCR and Mass Wildlife. This is not to be confused with the larger partnership Southeastern Massachusetts Bioreserve, but these do make up part of that larger partnership. Although we try to avoid wetlands, DCR has been encouraged by Mass Wildlife and Natural Heritage to allow prescribed fire to enter the wetland for ecological purposes. We are proposing to, st to restore a fire-dependent natural community of a pitch pine oak forest. Restoring this natural community will provide habitat for a diversity of species. Historically, these pitch pine and oak communities evolved with fire. Without regular fire events, the pitch pine and oak community will become dominated by generalist, generalist plant species, which is currently being observed, mostly being white pine and red maple. The wetland trees consist of pitch pine, oak species, and red maple. The red maples mostly surround the certified vernal pool, vernal pool that exists within the wetland, the <coughs> crosshatch, and um, right. shrubs in the wetland are mainly high bush blueberry, maleberry, blue huckleberry, sweet pepper bush, and scrub oak. Green briar is also present with some thick patches. The wetland itself is approximately 9.5 acres and exists within a 20.5 acre burn unit. One certified, right, there's one certified vernal pool in the wetland, and there's one between the 100 foot buffer zone of the wetland, the smaller one up here. A 9.6 um, acre spot fire occurred during the night following a June 18th, 2021. Um, could you move the microphone a little closer? Sure, no problem, no problem. A, I'll just, uh, a 9.6 acre spot fire occurred during the night following a June 18th, 2021 prescribed burn in an abutting burn unit, um, burn unit I. Very few pitch pine saplings are present across the wetland or the upland. Pitch pine oak forests are a fire-dependent natural community and are threatened by the suppression of fire. Fire is an important ecological process as it facilitates nutrient cycling, stimulates and maintains seed banks, and helps maintain the open structure of this community. The project is within priority habitat of rare species and within estimated habitats of rare wildlife. Eastern box turtle has been documented in the project area and is listed as species of special concern. Habitat management plan has been approved by Natural Heritage that involves monitoring for such turtles. There will be minimum disturbance besides fire in the wetland as a sprinkler system would be installed. The sprinkler system is a series of tripods with the sprinkler on top as shown in the bottom left-hand corner. They are linked together by a flexible water hose. They're not permanent. They can be put up very quickly and taken down very quickly. They just sit right on top of the ground. Um, no vegetation needs to be cut for their installation. Um, the sprinkler system would be located in the wetland at its uh, smallest width, right here, in, be in between the, from one 25 foot no disturbance zone to the other side of the 25 foot no disturbance zone. And um, yes, in the approximate length of the Sprinkler system is about approximately 137 feet. Uh, additionally, mode fuel brakes will need to be established prior to burning, shown here on the dark lines. Basically, we have to surround the fire, uh, prescribed fire, so we can get access to it. Um, 
they're, they're basically just mowed temporary strips through the forest um, to reduce understory vegetation to enable access by fire trucks and fire crews. Our typical width is 16 feet. They were only in, they, were, they will only be up, they only will be established in the upland uh, to within 25 feet of the wetland. No water be extracted from the wetland or the vernal pools. Steel fence posts will be installed at the intersection of the fuel break and the 25 foot no disturb zone to inhibit vehicles from getting any closer to the wetland. Fuel break installation will only occur from November 1st to April 15th per the, per the approved habitat management plan to limit impact to eastern box turtles. And additionally, maintenance mowing will be done as needed for the fuel breaks, but will be kept to a minimum as possible. DCR requests approval of future fuel break maintenance as part of this notice of intent. We respectfully request that the Fall River Conservation Commission find that the proposed prescribed burn restoration activities meet the criteria of an ecological restoration limited project and issue an order of conditions. Due to the nature of the work, DCR requ also requests a five-year order of conditions. And oh, any questions? Yeah, I actually have a couple. What's your sure. clear sprinkler system? What's your water source going to be? That'll be the, uh, we have fire trucks that can hold up to 600 gallons. And we also always have a tender that typically holds 5,000 within just a few minute drive of, of the burn. So this burning would take place between November and April? The burn itself could take place any time of year. Just the mechanical installation of the fuel brakes due to the machinery can only occur from November 1st to April 15th. Okay. Just my concern is that vernal pools become really active in the February, beginning of March, and I would be concerned about any type of activity taking place out there to stop that migration back to the vernal pool. Yeah. So I don't know if we can include that in the order of conditions that nothing take place beginning mid-February, beginning of February through um, um, once the vernal pool dries up. Well, it depends. I mean, some years it dries up and some years it might not dry well, up. Correct, but the species that rely on a vernal pool for reproduction, yes. um, they typically stop those migrations mid-February, it, it depends on the lunar cycle and things like that, and, and pro, you know, proximity. So right. any, any disturbance, disturbance to the area prior to that would disrupt that natural migration back to those pools. I just think it's something to be considered. It's a relatively long No, I mean, that's, I mean, putting a time restriction for the burn isn't, isn't a, a big issue for no, us. No, I don't think it is. And, and I know you've done some prescribed burns already out there. Right. Um, and they, I've been out there, they seem to go pretty well. So, I mean, I, I have no concerns with that. That's my only concern. No, that's, that's, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we can develop a right. around for that. Yep. Okay. So when you talk about a burn, well, how big is the area that you're going to be burning? In this case, we would typically, well, this prod, this project is, involves five, we call units, with one unit containing the wetland. And we typically would do one unit per day just because of manpower and how fire s slowly goes across the landscape. So in this case, it's a 20.5 acre unit with a, basically half of it being wetland. And that would probably be a one day event just because it is a special unit in this case with the wetland. But fire itself would be, we wouldn't have, to put fire on the ground, we have drip torches, but we wouldn't have drip torches in the wetland, just basically allowing the fire to go into the wetland right. to kind of do its thing. So you'll have places that won't burn, and you'll have places that will. Kind of give that a mosaic uh, feel to it. Okay. Uh, one question you mentioned monitoring the eastern box turtles. Do you, is there a means and method for that? Or like how, how? Um, to, we do have a turtle um, monitoring plan. It's very, very simple. Just go out after the burns. Cheap, find, if there isn't, search for turtles, but they have to be, you have to be a certified turtle inspector um, through, mass, through natural heritage, which I am, and other people are. And then you 
find the turtles, GPS them, take pictures of them, and um, report those findings to Natural Heritage. Aren't the turtles uh, dead by then? No, the turtles themselves can turtles themselves can survive prescribed fire. There's been actual video down on the Cape Cod Joint Base where a turtle actually went in front of a camera during a burn, burrowed into the ground, and then came right back after the burn went well, over them. The relatively small area. So wouldn't you? Walk the area? Oh, yeah, we well, definitely, yes, yes. We would walk the area first, yeah, definitely. Right. Control, uh, control burns are typically a low temperature burn, so you don't get uh, that. Right, and, the, and the, the, the fire itself is typically quite slow. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's. Especially with the ground wet. Right, I mean, you could, you could walk, out walk it backwards, uh, the fire typically. It's very, very slow. Right, you'd think, because I know that if you're mowing, if you're mowing grass in a, in a turtle area, say with, near the electric, near the electric plant on, on here, um, basically people walk ahead. Right, in this, right, right. In this you case. Walk ahead of the fire? There, you could walk ahead of the fire, yes. That's not, a, that's typically, there's always, we always surround the fire with people anyway, just so, there's eyes and eyes on the ground, so in case there's a spot fire or something else, or public coming in, or anything that I could disturb, well, that could interrupt operations that we need to that we would have to stop the burn. But in this I, in this case, the the actual mowing of the fire breaks can only occur during the dormant season, where the turtles are typically underground. Right, but I was talking about. A no, the burn the burn. It, Natural Heritage doesn't think this is also kind of a test run for Natural Heritage as well. They kind of they're very interested in see the the relationship between prescribed well between fire and turtles, and this is kind of a like a um, like a pilot right like a pilot project. And they're actually um, Mass Wildlife and New Mass has actually just put in a for a PhD student to monitor fire and turtles on the ground. So this is, they want to see what happens, basically. Pretty much the challenge of their, could we ask the stipulant that we get a copy of the report on the turtles? A copy of the report on the turtles? Yeah, he's just talking right, about. It, right, because we, any, right, we'll have a monitoring. Yeah, the, the pro, turtle monitoring report for right. when we do sweeps. Yeah, yeah that's I'm no problem. The sweeps are going to have to yeah. occur a little before, even a couple days before the work begins. Typically we do then, it the morning of. Okay, the morning of. <clears throat> right, then. we do that for burns that, that aren't even near the wetlands just because the whole forest is habitat. habitat. Uh, so we do the, sweeps and, and, and these currently. burns have been taking place for some time. It's common practice um, and they've been taking place for some time. I know there was some, I know they, I, I saw the fire breaks last spring for what took place right. last spring. So. Right. It's common uh, forestry and management practice to do these. Um, right, that is right. A, in fact a common mm -hmm. practice. I, right, before any operation, there has the to be monitoring for turtles. Does, uh, does the turtles, and this is the first chance it's come to the Conservation Commission. The, I can tell you that the um, electric company said, I think it was 28, did they tag the, the box turtles? They said they had 28 different turtles tagged around, and that's not that far from where you are. No, there's t we've seen turtles before. Yeah, so uh, this is an important this is an important issue. That's all, mm -hmm. that's all I'm saying. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. So, now the same is true. I didn't quite get. By the way, I thought I heard you say two things on the uh, vernal pool. One was that you weren't going to burn at the time when the, uh, when the frogs and salamanders and so forth were migrating. Right, that's right. That's perfectly fine. Is that correct? That's correct. So you won't burn, dur you won't burn during March or late February? Correct. That's not, a, that's not an issue. Fine. We have a motion. So, uh, what do we want to put in? Uh, I guess the question.
question. I didn't, I didn't put together any conditions for this one since it's kind of a different sort of project than we're used to seeing. So um, one condition, they are requesting five year instead of three years, so that would be one condition. You could, um, you know, some of the things he's mentioned, like, you know, no mowing during active, um, like, turtle movement season. Um, right, which is a condition, is a condition, of, condition the of the anyway. habitat management plan anyway. Because yeah. a lot of these items are already, like, conditioned by, like, natural yeah. heritage. Well, so. you know, there's, there's a lot of things that are written down in, in guidelines. Um, I just think it might be a good idea if we restated the most important ones, which were had to do with protection of turtles and protection of the vernal pool. So you said you know, burning uh, February till end of March. End of March. All right. Can I have a motion that uh, um, and the turtle stuff too? Yeah. Uh, we'll take uh, uh, no burning from February to March. Uh, grant them uh, five year. Extension on burning, uh, turtle monitoring report. Yeah, the tur uh, and then reiterating all of the points from the uh, from the application regarding like the time constraints and the turtle management plan they have. Okay. And uh, no mowing during uh, migration. Uh, I think that covers it. Can I have a motion? Uh, so moved. Second. Second. Uh, vote. Aye. 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 Aye.
just, unless someone has seen something on site to kind of indicate that maybe one of those shouldn't be issued at this point. Yeah, I have a motion to take as a group. So moved. Second. And that's number, I think, what was it, 5 through 16? We need yes. to vote on that. It's actually up yeah, there today. And just a vote. Aye. Aye. Looked at the retention pond. <coughs> Yeah. So we're going to take. Uh, this is not approval of the thing. This is approval of the vote, is it? Yes. Yeah. We're, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just like okay. So I'll read all those in then to five through sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. Um, next, uh, with this condition, uh, the special certificate compliance to SE 24 709 owner applicant is Highland Farms Development LLC. Project location is 93 Highland Farm Road. Uh, Sister's map is U-01-054, followed by Zytec, request for certificate of compliance. Uh, seven is request for certificate of compliance, SE-24-712, owner applicant is Highland Farms Development, LLC, project location is 133 Highland Farm Road. Sister's map is U-01-052, followed by Zytec, on behalf of applicant, request for certificate of compliance. Uh, eight is a request for certificate of compliance, SE-24-717, owner applicant Highland Farms Development, project location is 113 Highland Farm Road, assessor's map is U-01-0053, followed by Zytec, on, owner, on behalf of applicant request for certificate of compliance. Nine is a request for certificate of compliance, SE-24-720, owner applicant is Highland Farms Development, LLC, Project location is 2691 Highland Avenue. Sister's map is U-01-0058, filed by Zytec on behalf of uh, applicant request for certificate of compliance. 10, request for certificate of compliance, SE-24-730, owner applicant is Highland Farms Development, LLC. Project location is 8 Steep Brook uh, Terrace. Sister's map is U-01-0057, Filed by SciTech on behalf of applicant request for a certificate of compliance. 11, request for a certificate of compliance, SE 24 731. Owner applicant is Island Farms LLC. Project location is 81 Hackfield Lane. Assessor's map is U 01 0040. Followed by SciTech on behalf of applicant request for a certificate of compliance. 12, a request for certificate of compliance, uh, SE-24-732, owner applicant is Highland Farms LLC. Uh, project location is 7 Old Pasture Way. Sister's map is U-01-0049, followed by SciTech on behalf of applicant requesting a certificate of compliance. 13 is a request for certificate of compliance. It's SE-24-735, owner applicant is Highland Farms Development LLC, project location, 41 Hatfield Lane. Uh, assessor's map is U-01-0042, followed by Zytec on behalf of applicant requesting a certificate of compliance. Uh, 14 is a request for certificate of compliance, SE-24-736, owner applicant is Highland Farms Development LLC, Old Pasture Way. Assessor's map is U-01-0050, filed by Zytec on behalf of applicant requesting a certificate of compliance. 15, request for certificate of compliance, uh, SE-24-737, owner applicant is Highland Farms Development, LLC. Project location is 61 Hayfield Lane. Assessor's map is U-01-0041, followed by Zytec, on behalf of applicant requesting a certificate of compliance. And the last one is 16, is request for certificate of Compliance SE-24-738, owner applicant is Highland Farms Development, LLC. Project location is 101 Hayfield Lane. Uh, assessor's map is U-01-0039, followed by Zytec, on behalf of uh, applicant requesting a certificate of compliance. Thank you. <clears throat> I can add something just quickly. So uh, again, as I previously had stated, these would be certificates of compliance requests for individual lots for notice of intents that had been approved by the commission. All the work has been completed uh, in accordance with the order uh, after our review. 
and we offer that through the filing of this and the, uh, the cover letter that came with it illustrates that, that that we believe all the work has been done in accordance with the with the order. Mr. Chair, may I make a statement? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, as before, I went out to the site, and it does appear that everything has been constructed per the plans and per the order of conditions it was issued for this work. So uh, staff recommendation is that uh, we issue the certificate of compliance for all 11 of these um, orders. Any questions? No questions. So can I have a motion to... Uh, Issue a certificate of compliance. So moved. Second. Roll call vote. Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, next is uh, 17 notice of intent SE 24 791 owner applicant is Highland Farms 2 development LLC Hayfield Lane lot 1 census map is U 04 001 and U5-005 APO filed on behalf of SciTech, on behalf of applicant, uh, post construction of a single family dwelling with associated grading utilities with 100 foot to bordering uh, vegetated wetland. All proposed activity falls within the previous approved limits of the work, erosion control barriers imposed along the work line. Good evening. Uh, again, for the record, Dan Aguiar from SciTech CEC. And as the chairman stated, this is with regards to the filing of a notice of intent for lot number one in the second phase of Highland Farms. So lot number one is starting down towards the Courtney Street end of the project. The commission issued an order of conditions for the subdivision itself, Highland Farms 2, probably six months or so ago. Work has been begun on that site. All drainage is in, detention ponds are in. They're actually getting ready to pave hopefully by the 10th of this month when paving plants are supposed to close. So they've been moving along uh, very quickly. You may recall maybe two months ago, you issued orders of conditions for probably a dozen lots on the Hayfield side of this subdivision out near the existing Highland Farms phase number one. So we did again, clump a bunch of these in and file them um, all together. I'm not sure if you, the last time we did, I gave you a presentation on all of the lots and then you dealt with them. So we can do them one by one if you would like, or if I can just give you an overall presentation of each individual lot. I'm not opposed to doing it either way. I, I do know that it's lengthy, but it's it's up to the commission how they would like to move. After speaking to City Planner Bill Kenny, we do have to take individual votes on them, but you could group the presentations together. It's up yeah. to you guys what you would like to um, see. That works. Okay. Yeah. So again, it's going to be super repetitive. But just knowing moving forward on all of these, what I've done is I've colored the bordering vegetated wetland in green. In pink is the previously approved erosion control barrier for the subdivision. In orange would be the proposed house. Blue is the actual lot itself. And then yellow would be the 100 foot buffer zone. So they're all gonna be just about identical. Some of them, the work is closer to the wetland than others, but all of the proposed activity falls within the previously approved limit of work and the site is entirely cleared and already graded to accommodate this next phase. So all of the limit of work areas that you see shown on these plans, work has already been done up to that through the subdivision permitting for the subdivision in that order of conditions. So our first lot, I want to hope, hope you guys can all see this fairly well. Uh, so lot number one, for orientation purposes, this would be Courtney Street running along this side of this page. So as we come in, uh, up to Hayfield Lane, the our first lot on this right hand side, we're proposing the single family home. Again, this green area is the limit of the bordering vegetated wetland, approved under an ANRAD for this commission. This pink line is the previously approved limit of work under the old, the original order of conditions. Orange is the proposed dwelling. We have a driveway. And most importantly, when we're dealing with these, is roof drain dry wells to collect all of the storm water that comes off of this roof area. The driveways themselves are pitched to the roadway, and all of that stormwater has been approved through the subdivision permitting through that drainage system, catch basins, storm scepters, and detention ponds. So this is probably where the work is closest to the wetland as far as, as far as the home. This proposed home would be about 10 feet off of this wetland, but again, this is an approved limit of work, and it is currently cleared up to that area. So hay, this hay bales and silt fence line is already in, uh, and of course, this order 
would require that that also keep getting updated for this lot individually. The original order for the subdivision also requires for this to be maintained, but this new order will, again, reiterate the fact that this needs to be maintained during the construction process for the house itself. So that would be lot number one. So now, this is where we come down through the very first depression, where there was a wetland crossing through our site, and we have a yeah. culvert that we propose running through here. So now we're going downhill into the subdivision, get crossing through this wetland area, and we're coming up on lot two, which would be on that right-hand side. So the lot we just looked at was just here. This would be the swath of wetland that came through where the culvert is. Again, identical, almost identical mirror image, bordering vegetated wetland, previously approved limit of work, proposed dwelling, 100 foot buffer zone, and again, green being, uh, sorry, blue being uh, the lot itself. What we've done on these is we've tried to incorporate as close to walkout basements as we can on all of these to minimize the amount of filling in the backyards. Uh, and we've had to institute some retaining walls in some areas to minimize that filling as we get close to the wetland as well. This one we were able to grade out normally. Uh, so sometimes we can't get a full walkout, so, but we can at least do it partially so we can get some windows in the basement and put some light in that as well. So again, same single family dwelling, proposed driveway with stormwater running out to this existing catch basin system into and run to a detention pond that sits up about in this location. A question. Sure. How close is the house to the 100 foot area and well, 25 the, foot? Don't, here, don't he, do anything on it. This is the 100 foot buffer zone. So the entire lot falls within the buffer zone. The green line is the wetland. The house is no closer than 10 to the wetland. And this, it was determined that the 25 foot no touch policy did not apply to this subdivision because it was permitted and approved prior to the institution of that policy. You all, I don't know if you were at the first meeting for these, but we, we discussed that at the first meeting and Bill felt that it was appropriate not to incorporate or institute that policy for this subdivision, where this was already a previously approved limit of work for okay. the subdivision. I, I, that's, what I, that's what I was thinking. Now as we start continuing through the site, and we get away from, again, this wetland in this location. On this parcel, here's the buffer zone. So we basically have an entire lot between us and the wetland. So the buffer zone barely touches this lot. However, um, we felt the need to file uh, with the Conservation Commission, of course. Rather than file just an RDA, we decided let's just file them all as notice of intent so everybody has the same conditions and the same process. Erosion control proposed down in the down gradient portion of this site as well. Orange, because this lot has no wetland, we were able to build a larger house. The same stormwater management standards with infiltration chambers uh, from all of the roof areas as well. One question for you. Are the sure. grades shown, are they already graded or is it? No, no. What they've done is through the subdivision, because overall drainage for the subdivision with getting water into ponds, so everything is cleared, some preliminary grading is done. Okay. There is additional grading and filling to do once the foundation gets put in. Okay, and that's what's shown as proposed. Yes. So the darker lines with the, you know, with, with the circles, with the, those are proposed grades. Lot number four, I just I had it in this group set because we did them all. Did not require a filing because there is no buffer zone uh, associated with that lot. So that's one we don't have to go on. Uh, lot number five. Again, bordering vegetated wetland is down in this location, you know, beyond the next lot down. Yellow is the 100 foot buffer zone. So the house just barely clips the buffer zone. But again, because that corner of the house and some of this rear yard grading falls within the 100 foot buffer zone, the filing of a notice of intent we felt was, was appropriate. Again, orange is the house, blue would be the lot. And of course on these as well, three, three locations of roof drain drywall chambers that we'll be putting in. Everything that you see here is identical to what was permitted on phase one. So everything that they were made to do there and lived up to, we're asking for the same thing to carry over. And that was through the permitting process, everybody's concern was as long as they do things the way they did it on phase one, we'll be happy with it. Uh, okay, lot number six. Again, blue, we've got a little bit of an otter shaped lot here. Bordering vegetated wetland is down in this location. The house is located up here. 
this yellow line would be the 100 foot buffer zone. Root drain dry wells up in the front location of this house, um, up near the street. Again, pink would be the erosion control barrier set. Lot number seven, again, green being the bordering vegetated wetland. This lot a little bit different, although the proposed limit of work didn't change much. This lot does have steep brook that runs along this portion of the site, so we do have a 25 foot no touch zone uh, for that 25 foot riverfront area that is maintained through that. So this limit of work area that you see here uh, was always proposed to be at that 25 foot no touch. A little bit of a smaller house pushed off in this location so that we could continue to provide the, uh, the 20 foot buffer to Steep Brook. Erosion control would be wrapped around the downgrading portion of the project as well. This is now bringing us through where Steep Brook and the existing culvert, that six foot diameter culvert, is located. That would be yeah. right here in this location, just for orientation purposes. We then jump to directly across the street. So we just looked at lot six. So anything north of this culvert, that's the group that we had permitted, I think, in July, I think was when those, when those orders were issued. So now we jump across the street. Again, very similarly, we're dealing with buffer zone that you see shaded in yellow. We do have that same 25 foot no touch zone to the top of the bank of the river. And then the bordering vegetated wetland actually falls just inside of the limit of that that form of vegetated wetland. So again, the proposed limit of work was previously approved, and this continues down if there's a detention pond back in this location. So the proposed house is in orange again, roof drain dry well locations, as, as previously discussed on the other lots. So now we're heading our way back down to Courtney Street. Just looked at this lot here, now we're coming around this first cul-de-sac of Stony Brook Circle. Again, wetland in green. This dark black line is the top of the bank. 25 foot no activity zone shown in pink. Previously approved limit of work, shaded in pink in this location. Proposed dwelling, roof drain dry wells. Coming around the cul-de-sac again, identical with green being the border bordering vegetated wetland, 25 foot no activity zone. This is one of the larger detention ponds that accepts drainage from, from this part of the cul-de-sac. So there is an additional wetland that wraps up behind there, but this one, the entire lot encompassed by the 100 foot buffer zone. Smaller house on this one, shaded in orange, blue again being the lot line, and pink being the erosion control barrier. Coming around the cul-de-sac a little bit further, again, bordering vegetated wetland in green, Pink being the previously approved limit of work and hay bale line. House pushed over no closer than 10 feet. This is one of the lots where we're going to be installing a retaining wall so that we can minimize the amount of filling that needed to take place. Um, they're expensive, but it lets you have a flatter front yard, but you do have to spend the money on putting that wall in. Now as we head out towards this long stretch of hay field, uh, hay field all of these homes sit as close to Hayfield as possible. There is a detention pond behind them, and then the wetland is beyond that pond again itself. So green would be the bordering vegetated wetland. This would have been the previously approved limit of work for the subdivision for when we were building this pond. What we did do was propose a new erosion control barrier just for the work for the house. So that way any work that takes place here doesn't find its way into the pond. So this lot, and you'll see on the plans, there's a longer bold line. That's the previously approved hay bale line. New hay bale line is this shorter dash line, but it's called out as, as new hay bale line as well. <coughs> I think the next line, I don't know if that's going to be. So almost identical to that, we've got this very lo large, long detention pond behind the house uh, and new erosion control barrier set as well. Roof drain dry wells again on these. All of them have that, and that was all part of the subdivision approval as well. This is the last one before we get to that first culverted crossing where we basically started with lot number one. And we have this proposed house here. New hay bale and silt fence line showing in pink. This green line would be where the original hay bale and silt fence line was proposed. 
retaining wall again on this side so that we can minimize the amount of fill coming up uh, adjacent to that well. And then we have our last lot, which is lot number, don't we pick two more, lot 27. Um, this is probably the tightest lot we had to incorporate using uh, retaining wall along this side. Again, this green line would be the bordering vegetated wetland and previously approved limit of work, the tension pond to the rear, and we propose new hay bale and sole fence line wrapping around the new limit of work for, us, for the house itself. What happens is when you have a developer that's responsible for the subdivision construction and that hay bale and sole fence, theoretically someone else could build this house and be responsible for their own hay bales and so fence. This is all the same developer, so we kind of don't have to worry about that, but we do want to make sure that it's on the plan in case someone goes by it. And then the last lot, again, yellow in uh, is buffer zone. The bordering vegetated wetland here, again, is, is beyond the next lot over. It would be located here. Uh, detention pond to the rear of that project as well. Orange being the house and roof drain drywall is proposed for each of them. So they're pretty repetitive. Uh, at no point is any house closer than 10 feet uh, to the bordering vegetated wetland. At no point is any of the work go beyond the previously approved limit of work. Any questions? I do know Caitlin has a set of quarters because we, we've talked about this and Caitlin's done a wonderful job. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. But um, again, for certain lots that are more intense or closer to the wetlands, I know she has different orders of, or different proposed can, conditions. Yeah, and I can summarize that. Really, it's kind of, most of them all have the same order, but really it's like number three and number five, whereas you're not directly abutting um, um, like, a, like a, a detention pond, you're not directly abutting um, wetland area, or really, within the 100 foot. Those are the two I would say, you know, maybe not move forward with requirements on the draft special condition requirements number 35 and 36, which would be installation of signage, which since there's no wetland back there, the signage wouldn't really pertain to anything anyway. And 36, which is the construction of a, um, like a permanent demarcation such as fencing or putting in you know large rocks so vehicles and lawnmowers can't get through um, those are the only besides that I think the rest of them I, I can see having the same all, all 36 of the conditions on that list and a lot of them are you know a lot of the basic uh, ones that we're probably gonna have for most projects going forward um, with just some additional ones in purple too so that was lot one and Five? Yeah, I would say three and five. I, I think you said five, yeah. since they don't directly abut. Um, there are lots between them and the wetlands. Yeah. So the buffer zones just barely catch them. But all the other ones, um, even the ones um, like 24, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, where there may be uh, detention basins behind the houses. Mm -hmm. The way I've worded it is that the um, it's a. Um, a permanent boundary would be even there if it's stormwater BMP. So they would still need a permanent fence or whatever along the stormwater detention basins, which I'm pretty we sure we're going to do anyway. I'm pretty sure so, that fencing is required in the I'm, subdivision I'm like it was on it phase one. Yeah, I'm pretty um, certain it is, but the way I worded it, it just says, you know, a permanent uh, demarcation along wetland resource area um, or stormwater, like a detention okay. basin. So. Now, can we take three and five out of order? <clears throat> those? Yeah. Well, the only other thing I'd like to point out is that, um, you know, there are 14 detention ponds in phase two, correct? No, no. five. Five? Five. How many two. in phase one? Six, six, six or seven. And this really has nothing to do with, with the first the Pacific or SciTech or anything else like that. It's just consideration, that, and I want to put it out there, that um, once these streets are turned over to the city, the city owns all these protections. <coughs> And they don't last forever, and they do require minimal upkeep. But they do yeah, I mean, some upkeep, certain, certain, certain towns, you know, and cities spend more time and effort uh, sure. cutting the ponds. I mean, they should be cut at least once a year. Um, I can't say that Fall River's been the best at maintaining detention ponds. 
um, but they have a lot of detention ponds. So, right. so, so I mean, it does make it difficult. Yeah, I mean, it's just something to consider. It's not, again, it's not for discussion this evening, but at some point, the city's going to have to come up with a management plan for all these detention ponds because, quite frankly, they do need to be maintained. At some, at, they, they don't last forever. At certain points, they do fail. Um, so it's just, I want to put it out there just for public this, record that at some point we have to, this is actually yeah. quite new to me. This, had, we, you know, we have to um, have some discussion, or someone in the city has to have some discussion oh. about putting together some type of. Well, what happens is when, when the road gets accepted by the city council, mm -hmm. and there's a process for that. Right. We first right. we get a certificate of compliance, then the planning board will review it, make a recommendation, then it appears before the city council, and they determine whether or not they want to accept the way. When the way gets accepted, all of the conditions that were part of the original subdivision approval which detail maintenance mm -hmm. of all stormwater management, catch basins, storm scepters, detention ponds, all of that maintenance carries through. Right. Now, whether or not they, they do it or keep up with it, and it's not only for, I mean, most municipalities do not uh, take care of the things to the degree that they would force <laughs> a developer or an applicant to do. Um, the city's mindset, or, or most is water still flows downhill, you know, it may not function exactly how it was designed. It's still going to function, but probably. Storm scepters are the biggest thing. Right. So DEP pushes all of these proprietary stormwater management treatment manholes and catch basins, and they're all great. They cost a lot of money, but they do have to be maintained. Otherwise, they don't work. So luckily, the city does have a vac truck, and they actually do a good job of maintaining those. They do. Some municipalities don't have the ability to do it themselves, and that becomes very costly. So a lot of towns are now catching up with the fact that, hey, we need, especially with MS4 and like all their stormwater, um, that they have to take care of. Once they accept these roads, the maintenance of these falls under their, their MS4 permit for maintaining roadways. So a lot of towns, thank God, Fall River does have the ability, because I'll have towns asking me, oh, we want a storm scepter here, or we want a Vortechnics unit here, and that's all well and good, but as soon as Private property is one thing, a parking lot, the owner is always responsible. But when you put them in a roadway, they do need to be maintained. So Mr. Boyle is 100% correct with that. Yeah. Ooh. So can I have a motion to take out of order uh, lots three and lot five? So moved. Second. Vote. Okay. Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. So uh, this is for a uh, notice of intent on SE-24-787 Hayfield <coughs> Lane, Lot 3. And then notice of intent SE-24-786 uh, Hayfield Lane, Lot 5. Uh, special conditions. Uh, this document shall include in all reference and all contracts, plans, specifications dealing with the activities that is subject of this order and are created and modified after the incident date of this order along with statements with that this order shall supersede any conflicting congressional contractual arrangements plans or specifications the applicant shall provide a copy of this order to the person or person supervising the activities that are subject to this order and be responsible for ensuring that all persons performing and permitting activities are fully aware of the terms of the condition this order authorizes only act only the activity described on the approval plans and approved documents referred in this order, any other additional activities in this area within the jurisdiction of the commission will require separate review and approval of the commission or its agent. Prior to construction, pr prior to work uh, commencing on this site, the applicant shall arrange with the commission or an agent a pre-activity meeting between the applicant or the applicant's representative person or supervisor responsible for the work and members of the conservation commission or its agent. The applicant shall display the DP file number for this order on a sign within 200, I mean, dimensions of two feet by two feet at the location clearly visible from the street. The sign shall remain in place and visible until certificate of compliance is issued. Applicant shall provide proof to the commission or its agent that the order of conditions has been recorded with registered deeds. Uh, approved erosion control shall be installed as indicated on the approval plan and shall act as the limit of work immediately after installation of erosion control the Cons conservation commission shall contact to conduct a follow-up inspection to ensure that erosion controls have been properly installed prior to the start of work during construction the applicant and any person involved in the activity that is the subject of this order shall notify the commissioner or his agent immediately upon discovery of the matter 
related to the orders may affect in any area within the jurisdiction of the commission. Um, a copy of this order, condition, construction plans, and copies of the documents and reports shall be on the site upon commencement and during any site of work, contractor review, and here too. Under no conditions shall the operation of equipment storage or material stockpile on the soil or other site disturbance take place beyond the limit of work except where indicated within the plans. Erosion and sedimentation control devices shall be inspected after each storm event and repaired or replaced as necessary. Erosion control devices shall remain in place and properly functioning until all exposed soils have been stabilized or final vegetative cover and conservation commission or its agent has authorized the removal. All stockpile of soil existing for more than one day shall be covered and surrounded by a row of trench compost tube, waffle, or other sedimentation control devices. Post construction upon completion of construction, final soil uh, stabilization and removal of erosion and sedimentation control, the applicant shall submit the following to the Conservation Commission of Request for Certificate of Compliance. A completed request for certificate of compliance, form WPA form 8A, a letter from the Register of Professional Engineer certifying compliance of the property with order of conditions detailing any deviations that existed, potential effect of uh, the project. A statement that is substantial compliance with no detailing a deviation shall not be accepted. Uh, an as-built plan signed and stamped by registered professional engineer or land supervisor, surveyor, uh, showing post-construction conditions within all areas under the jurisdiction of Massachusetts Wetland Protection. Uh, conditions, conditions of purity, all organic pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and slow-release uh, fertilizers may be used subject to review and approval of Conservation Commission. This commission condition shall survive the expiration of this order and shall include as a conditioning, continuing condition as on a certificate of compliance. There shall be no dumping of leaves, grass clippings, brush, or other debris into the wetland resource areas. This condition survives its expiration of this uh, order and shall be included as a continuing condition on a uh, certificate of compliance. Can I have a motion? Make a motion to accept the uh, special conditions. Okay. Second. Second. Roll call. Aye. 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 Three and five pass. Thank you. If I can just make one point of notice, and I think Caitlin was probably going to direct you guys into this direction. If, if you're going to have a standard set of special conditions, you can usually, once you're comfortable with what each number means, you can make a motion to approve special conditions 1 through 30 and then add any super special conditions mm -hmm. after so you don't have to read them in all of the time. Yeah, I think hopefully right. next month we'll be looking at the bylaw and I'll have regulations along with it. Okay. I think in the regulations. So it's You'll have all those standard special. I'm going to have an entire section of standard okay. well, conditions for um, all projects. No, so. but he reads so well. He uh, <laughs> does. I know. I, I feel and, so and if we only had one hearing so or two, you know. It's not a big deal, but, yeah. <laughs> but for all the other ones under this, we can yeah. they can be like, right. mm -hmm. approved um, based since off Since we're of that taking a break, I just have a question for you. Sure. How many homes are going to be up there? I think this no. new subdivision, this new second phase, I think was 43. Yeah. But I mean the whole... Total, I think we'll probably, like with phase one and phase two. Phase two, and then there's the St. Vincent's Farm thing, which I don't, which is not yours, I don't think. No, Highland Woods is not mine. That was done by Steen Development. That's the one at the very end of Courtney. That we had right. nothing What's to do with. What's your guess as to the how many homes? Probably total, maybe 150 once this is done okay. from what was not there 10 years ago. Thank you. Yeah. That's all I need to know. Steen's annuals? Yeah, yeah. So I think we'll be a total at about 90. Yeah. And I think he was at about 60 or 70 with Highland Woods, which, which is done. They're actually getting ready to kind of clean that up as well. Yeah. But that's not my mess. This is, I have my own messes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So we actually have to have a separate vote for three and a separate vote for five. I was um, counseled by uh, Bill correct. Kenny that we should take a individual vote for each public hearing, okay. technically. But we can reference back to what he doesn't have to read that whole thing again. Mm -hmm. We can just reference back to All it. All right. So, so uh, can I have a motion for uh, lot three? The conditions just so read it. Second. Second. 
Vote? Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 Vote passes. Uh, for lot five, can I have a motion with the conditions we just read in? The same as lot three. So moved. And seconded. Aye. Vote? Aye. 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 Passes. Okay. Back to one. Lot one. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now we got to take these separate. Um, notice of intent is SE-24-791. Uh, location is Hayfield Lane, lot one. Uh, same conditions as lot three and five, but we're going to add that uh, after completion of work and as condition of certificate of compliance, the applicant shall permanently mark the edge of the wetland areas with one or more signs to ensure no avertent encroachment <coughs> into the wetland design. Number of signs and manner of posting shall be determined by the commission shall be measured at least 12 inches by 12 inches and should, shall contain the following lang language. This is a protected conservation area per MGLCH.131 section 40. Any disturbance or alteration of this area by removal of materials or by dumping of field clippings or yard or other debris is strictly prohibited for order of Fall River Conservation Commission. If, if I could just let me add one thing only because you might want to change that so that the signage isn't placed at the wetlands line. You should probably place it at the limit of work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because we because not too. not every lot are we right against the wetland right. line. Right. The limit Which is what phase one was. All right. And then, and then I pay prior, attention. Yeah. And prior to uh, Insurance of the certificate of compliance, the applicant shall permanently mark the limited <coughs> limit of work abutting resource areas, resource area buffers, stormwater detention basins, as approved in this order. Ensure no inadvertent encroachment into the resource area. The applicant shall instruct all agents to explain these markers to buyers, lease, landscapers, and all other persons taking over the property from the applicant. This condition shall survive the expiration of the order and shall include as continuing. Uh, Stupid compliance. So, uh, can I have a motion? So moved. And second. Vote? Aye. 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 Right. So, uh, next is notice of intent for SE 24 799, uh, Hayfield Lane, Lot 2. Uh, can I have a motion for the uh, same conditions as Lot uh, 3 and 5 and uh, Lot 1? So moved. Uh, vote? Aye. 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 Vote passes. Uh, We're at lot 6 now. Lot 6. Okay, notice of intent number is SE-24-785. That's Hayfield Lane, lot 6. Can I have a motion to include the same conditions as lot uh, 3 and 5 and 1? So moved. Second. Vote. Vote passes. Aye. Uh, next one is notice of intent SE-24-789, that's Hayfield Lane, Lot 7. Can I have a motion to um, contain the same conditions as Lot 3 and 5 and 1? So moved. Second. Second. Vote. Aye. 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 Uh, next one is notice of intent SE-24-788, that's Hayfield Lane, Lot 20. Can I have a motion to contain the same conditions as Lot 3 and 5 and 1? So moved. Second. Second. Vote. Aye. 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 Uh, next one is notice of intent SE-24-794. Uh, can I have a motion condition the same as lot 3 and 5 and 1? So moved. Second. Vote. Aye. 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 Passes. Uh, next one is the notice of intent SE-24-793, lot 22. Can I have a motion for the same conditions as lot 3 and 5 and 1? So moved. Second. Vote. Aye. 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 Vote passes. Uh, next one is SE-24-792. This is uh, Stony Brook Circle, lot 23. Can I have a motion to same as lot 3 and 5 and 1? So moved. Second. Vote. Aye. 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 Vote passes. Uh, next one is notice of intent SE-24-797, Hayfield Lane, lot 24. Can I have a motion to pass with the same conditions as lot 3, 5, and 1? So moved. Seconded. Vote. Aye. 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 Passes. Uh, next one is notice of intent SE-24-796, Hayfield Lane, lot 25. Can I have a motion 
to pass in the same conditions as lot three, five, and one. So moved. Second. Vote. Aye. 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 Vote passes. Uh, next one is a notice of intent SE-24-795 at Safefield Lane, lot 26. Can I have a motion to pass on the same conditions as lot 3, 5, and 1? So moved. Second. Vote. Aye. 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 Vote passes. Uh, next one is notice of intent SE-24-798 Hayfield Lane, lot 27. Can I have a motion to uh, same conditions as lot 3, 5, and 1? So moved. Second. Vote. Aye. 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 Vote passes. Next is notice of intent SE-24-790 Hayfield Lane, lot 28. Can I have a motion? Same conditions as lot 3, 5, and 1. So moved. Second. Vote. Aye. 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 Vote passes. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you for doing this so efficiently and expeditiously. I, I appreciate it. There's a football game on tonight. Right? I might only get about, the Patriots are on tonight. I might get about 20 minutes of it before I fall asleep. But thank you all very much. I appreciate it. And uh, you guys all have a good holiday, whatever that holiday may be for everybody. And we'll see you after the new year, hopefully. Oh, you won't see me at the meeting. I don't think I have anything on that one. So we can take one night off. Thank you again. We won't have 28 projects. No, I think the, well, the filing deadline is, is it Christmas Eve? Oh, man. Should be pretty close. I mean, I, we actually felt, I mean, I felt horrible dumping all of these at like 3 o'clock the night before Thanksgiving because that was the filing deadline of, of this month. <laughs> but we don't get to pick when we're required to file these. So mm -hmm. we get marching orders, and that's where we have to go. But thank you both. The staff did a wonderful job getting this done as quickly and efficiently as possible. Thanks. All right. We'll see you guys soon. Have a good Christmas. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. All right. Next is the receipt of a correspondence review and discussion of the National Bridge Yearly Operational Plan. That would just... Uh... Are you on the right... I think you skipped a little bit. Oh, no. I'm trying to get that. 32. 32. Oh, 32. 32. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm pushing it. Uh, all right, uh, this was a review and discussion of Public Lands and Preservation Act. Um, if everyone got this. I think what they're looking for is, I guess, to see if we would support this, uh, this cause too. Does the board have yeah, a discussion? They, they're soliciting uh, letters of support. Um, a big part of this is Right now, with Article 97, any piece of property that is voted to come out of Article 97 um, is required by policy to have an equal amount of land in equal or better value of natural resource value than put in protection if another piece of land is taken out. That's only a policy, so it can be um, you know refuted. So basically, they're trying to create make this into an actual regulation, making it a state requirement that if any land is taken out of um, Article 97, that it has to be put back in. So they're asking for um, commissions and other organizations around the state to issue a letter of support um, just so they could, when they go to the state to make this case and to ask them to pass the law, that um, it, it, it's almost like a, you know, a list of people in support of it, really. So. Mm -hmm. Does it affect the other parts of Article 97? No. Just nope, it's just making it actually stronger as yeah. opposed to, you know, weakening it. And you recommend we Yeah, the last commission I was on, I believe we issued a letter, and I'll just type up a little letter saying, you know, the Fall River Commission voted to, in support of um, the Public Lands uh, Preservation Act. So moved. So make a motion that we draft a letter in support of uh, Public Land Preservation Act. Second. Second. Vote. Aye. 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 Next is re uh, review and discussion of water quality uh, certificate uh, certification application application for, for BRBWW <laughs> ten major project uh, certification received by Mass DEP. And this is once again just the required uh, mailing of the water quality cert to us. Mm -hmm. Every single time there's a uh, water quality certification file, we get a copy of it. So. Yeah. So make a motion to place on file. So, so moved. Vote. Aye. 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 Alrighty. Next, review and discussion of public involvement notification permanent solution with no condition statements, non-PCP uh, mineral oil detector 
fluid release pad no, number 43627 South Main Street. That was at uh, truck accident, right? Yeah. I can make a motion to put in file. Make a motion to place on file. Second. So move. Vote. Vote. Oh, right. uh, second. Aye. Uh, next is a review and discussion of phase four status report public notice of 749 Brooklyn Shan Street. Ooh. Make a motion to place on file. So, um, so second. Vote. Aye. Okay. Aye. Place on file. Uh, next is a review and discussion of notice environmental sampling. Make a motion to place on file. So moved. Uh, second it, Jim. Vote. Aye. Aye. Okay. Next is a review and discussion of the National Grid's yearly operational plan. Any discussion? None. Make a motion to place on file. So moved. Second it. Vote. Aye. 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 Vote passes. Uh, next is a review and discussion notification implementation of release abatement measures located at 120 Charles Street. Any uh, discussion? Uh, I did review this. I've, yeah, no, no discussion, no questions or anything to add to it. All right. Make a motion. Make a motion to put on file. Second. Uh, vote. Aye. 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 Vote passes. Uh, next, review and discussion of Department of Environmental Protection Waterways Regulation Program Notice of License Applicant Application Number W21-6063. Any discussion? I missed that. What is it? Does anyone know? So it's it's another um, it's a license application under the I think Chapter 91. So. It's, it, once again, local conservation commissions get a copy of it sent to them. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Just There's a lot of stuff that we just received just a lot of. Yeah. yeah. So make a motion to file, place on file. Motion. Second. Aye. Aye. Roll call vote. Aye. Roll call passes. Can I have a motion for approval of minutes, November 1st, 2021? So moved. Second. Second. Aye. Vote. Aye. Vote passes. Uh, any citizen input? Can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Vote. Aye. 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 Meeting's over. Woo.